Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Do You Know the Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Dmitry Lukachev, a lover, in which I've, um, if I'm saying his name wrong, my apologies, but calls for uprisings. Comrades, unlike the a-holes that run Siberia, I will not lie to you. The truth is simple, so simple I don't need any fancy language to explain it to you. It's a truth any simple Russian child knows. There's something wrong with those that leave. You all know the kind of men I'm talking about. Those that promise safety, promise prosperity, promise... What don't they promise? They've been doing it ever since, even before the Great Patriotic War. Now, when our country lies in ruin and our people scrounge in the dirt, what actions do our leaders take? They promise. I am one. I'm sick of the promises, sick of the lies, sick of the barbarism. So right here, right now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not your leader, and I never intend to be. I am simply a man, as you are, who wishes for the cruelty to stop. We have an opportunity now to forge a new Russia, one where each man truly is equal. One of the leaders to get it. We'll have to fight, however, the men of Central Siberia have nothing to lose. It is we who keep the production flowing, us who ensures the bullets, bread, and steel arrive on time. In the name of all the dead children, all the widows, all the crippled sons to heck with their promises. Can we and you all just calm down, please, as they take out Nova Sibiosk, as we're expanding in politics? Which, I believe I read this one yesterday, so if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. And, uh, there you go, there you go. Just go to the salons. Well, we're just here, um, to, uh, basically lower, ooh, more equipment would be very nice. Uh, administrative efficiency, so... Yeah, um, let's see, Discord, Source of Parties, uh, Siberian, uh, the Siberian Phoenix. The fall of the Russian Republic in 1918 shocked the world. It harbinged the rise of the first communist nation and the end of a brief experiment in Russia of the Republican democracy. In the aftermath of the fall of Bukharin's Union, many assumed that the Central Siberian Republic would form the kernel of the new Russian Republic. When it too fell, all rode off the wrong government in Tomsk as likely to fall within the year. Now the CSR is back, stronger than ever. The world shall hear this good news as we try to make the best of our isolated and landlocked position to reach the wider world. It's time for a diplomatic charm offensive, but the revolt of Novosibirsk. The state of affairs in Novosibirsk and its surrounding territories has reached a breaking point, it seems, for the fires of revolution are now bursting in the region, following our subsequent attempts to calm the striking workers of Novosibirsk. The aforementioned workers appear to have reached their limit and have broken out in open revolt, distressing news by itself, if further compounded by the fact that the outlying territories around Novosibirsk and the city itself encompasses major industrial capacity and a large population. An incredibly or increasingly a major threat to our nation, new nation. This workers' revolt will only continue to grow stronger by the day. We must extinguish the flame of the revolution before it's too late. Just when you thought the problems in Novosibirsk couldn't get any worse. Now, I'm only... Oh, oh there goes those guys. Um, I'm just waiting to do that just because... Oh, okay, so this, uh, this stuff too. Oh, there goes Shpare. Sad. Just so we, our soldiers that I accidentally converted over to basically militia can get a little bit more time, to get a little more strength, just because they're lacking a little bit of equipment here and there. But... 77% manpower, 77% current fighting strength, not bad overall. I'm not su super worried about it. And for political integration, extreme amount of political outsiders. We want to have no political outsiders. And probably more idealism too, so. Anything you really care about too much increases idealism, which is not bad. Decreases political outsiders. That's honestly probably really good to do as well, the Outsiders Act. Uh, so we saw yesterday, a lot of this just hurts our stability, which is not very good. And... It can decrease December's popularity, which I don't like. So, Ooh, and this one increases idealism. Not bad, but decreases our authority. Imagining development, we can close that one up for now. Uh, regional integration, don't need to worry about that as well. Close out of that one too. Here, connect the roads, and a lot of stuff down here too. You know what? We're going to do the Outsiders Act first. Why not? Screw it. 700 days, we get more research speed, increases idealism, and decreases political outsiders. Cool. And then we'll do another one down here too. All right, good enough. I don't want to wait any longer. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. They actually are just dotted around the landscape. Interesting. Cool. Well, all right, whatever. Uh, if we can just go straight to Nova Sibiris, that would be great. You guys go there, you guys go there. Um, give us a little bit more of a challenge this time around to see if... Uh, oh, look at that lag. Uh, we could still win, even though we kind of hurt ourselves, but that's all right, whatever. Just drive straight for Nova Sibiris, please. Thank you if you can. Oh, and a little bit more lag. Prat inaugurated in Chile. All right, cool. Keep these guys in place if you can as well. And this gives us more army XP too, which is not bad. I do like the army XP. I haven't tried. This is my first time in Toolbox Three actually doing this uh, revolt here as well. So you never know what might happen. Hey, those guys died. We love it. We love it when enemies die. And a better infantry equipment too. Great. Sixty-four. What are we going to do here? More anti tank yes, please. Guys, we'll have to get that one done eventually, anyways. Thank you. And help on Nova Sibirsk. If you just take out the tile, you might be good enough for everything else. Maybe. 52 army XP, not bad. Anything else done here? Propaganda campaigns. You get more stability, which is pretty nice. That's actually really nice. You get more depth, but whatever. How's the dead doing anyways? Ooh, we need more grid power too. 
do have a slicer plus. But, of course, once we get Nova Severus back, it should be a lot better. But after this, Sabian Phoenix, close to rivals. Ooh, common ground, far from that. Compassion. Um, rationalize. Do this one. That's not bad. That's actually quite good. Environmental rights. Ooh, power to it, we can improve. This is definitely the one we want to go down. But, expanding the core, where can we get, reduce administrative strain as well? Is it actually in the... Let's see. It's Phoenix. Oh. Oh, crap. It's all the way down here, too. So both of these... Integration Bureau, down there. Well, technically we already did that one. Oh. Hmm. Down here, too. Well, I guess we're gonna go straight down through this side, so... Let's go to the Salon, some of parties. Already new citizens of the Republic are assembling to form new political parties. Some are fairly mundane liberal conservatives. Others are more extremists, such as a radical Gary anarchist party, or mere front for dangerous groups of former military separatists or shadowy businessmen. Their progress are limited in some way by Tom's constitution. All candidates have to be endorsed on an electoral list of one of the four great salons. We can further monitor the situation by putting dangerous parties and associations under police surveillance. This will go against our idealist principles, but the invaluable source of information. Once a list of moderate and extremist factions is drawn up, we can encourage moderates to join the salon system and try to eliminate extremist influence. Not a bad idea. Oh, we got enough Sabiris. What else do we need here, then? Ah, oh, Barnall. That makes sense. Now, instead of going down there, can you actually win here? Let's cut these northern groups off. Nice. Best allowed plan of action. Cool. Increase the cynicism, huh? Discord and Salons. The topic of how to integrate so many new citizens into the Salon system has sparked quite the debates in the great Salons of Tomsk. Some argue that the common constitution should be amended. I would suggest political restrictions that would cast an ominous shadow over our democratic dream. It is important to calm tempers and soothe the chaos within the Salons. We will need every Salon to operate at its peak if we're going to offer a united front to calm the political storm. By appealing to everyone's heart and minds, we'll be able to pull the vast talents of Tomsk together to figure out the new solutions to the crisis. Yes, please. Go there. And. Ooh, are they trying to cut us off here? Well, that would be very nice. Actually, if anything, I want you guys to go here. Keep these guys in place. Keep those guys in place, too. There you go. Nice, that's better. Here, just kind of just keep circling these guys up this way. All in the name from our army XP. Or do we win here? Probably Africa. Yeah, it's Africa. Front victory in Africa! Good job, Africa! As long as we're not moving in here, kill all divisions pretty pretty nicely. Excuse me, sir, would you like to help us help us out? But happy December, everybody. It's still not even 1965 yet. About a month until there, though, but not bad. There we go. Yep, kill them off. You guys got this. There you go. If they take back Nova Sabiosk, it doesn't really matter. As long as we just kill off all the enemy divisions, that's all that we care about. Yep. Quite a few enemy divisions. Of course, we only have eight as well, but... Oh, there goes... Oh, Hagish was still alive, huh? Huh. So sad to see him go. So sad. Or I'll just have you guys do this. Turn the front back here. Surgency Crush. Better anti-air. Not bad. And... Better trucks. Let's get one going for now. It's fine. There you are, there you are. Go in, go in, go in. Actually, if anything, you want to go through. Militia is easier to, to defeat than anything else. Uh, I guess take a lot on there. We got encircled a little bit. That's fine, whatever. We'll get him on encircled. It's fine, it's fine. Oh, we got rid of those guys up there, too. Oh, the workers. Several of parties. Several commoners are beginning to be show signs of radicalist thought belonging to undesirable, undesired ideologies. Political groups centered around radicalism are propping up within our borders. And if we don't fix this issue soon, we'll brutally tear our democracy apart. We must find the individuals who snuck into our lands and contaminated our flowing wealth and intellectual thought with a poison of tyranny. We will be keeping a watchful eye on the commoners and even political elites for any important developments. In the meantime, our agents will find and crack down any radical political party that may attempt to corrupt the peasant minds. Hopefully we can get rid of this. Hopefully we can. Alright, so with those groups defeated, with those groups defeated, we are looking pretty not bad. 
pretty not bad. Four weapons are nice too. It is almost 1965, so let's come over here and do... I should have done this way earlier. Huh. More, uh, stuff there. Building up more roads, not bad, but whatever. Uh, now I have more than enough electricity, that's good. Of course, we did take barn all back, but still. Oh, we won! My apologies for taking so long with that. But it is what it is. Let's the university system. Hmm. Still 31%, cross along thinking. Greatly decreases political outsiders. Hmm. Where are we at for this one? So still 50 percent. Probably more idealism. That's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Perhaps the stability just a little bit in exchange for decreases political outsiders, but you also get better research efficiency. Yeah. I want more idealism. Hmm. Ah, I'll do it once, why not? Nice job. Now I'll convert it back. My apologies for that, by that earlier, everyone. It's just... Uh, my fault. That's just my fault. What out to you? And basically, I, I was told not to do this until 1968 to really just start making sure the economy is really functioning really well. But if you'd like to be, read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. We got a nice little surplus. Fair credit rating. Excellent. And house elections. We lost some December support. Okay, whatever. Excellent. Nice. Very good. Not bad. 11 billion. Uh, the growth is really bad. We need definitely more growth. Inflation is relatively high, though. Hmm. Hmm. But we're going to get rid of the debt first. Debt first goes bye bye. The courage and extreme peoples. Just go to the salons. Call for humanist passion. December's urge to calm. <clears throat> it's a December society has been long been seen as an old man out in Tomsk, conservative and more prudent in his vision for the new idealist republic. This prudence should not be mistaken for cowardice, however, as Dmitry Likachev is preparing a powerful speech arguing for calm and determination in maintaining the republican system. Tomsk elites, he argues, are used to steering the ship of state, and a great deal of new talent has been developed since the end of the provisional government. The elite has the backing of the people, as a republican system, and the free society in which it stands are a public arena for ideas. As long as the citizens show faith in their institutions and leaders, those who try to divide the Republic are sure to fail. Discord in the salons. With Central Soviet are once again under our control, many problems are starting to appear, mostly in our administration. While we are overextended, the main issue is with the salons. Any form of cohesion we once had has been shattered, and unity within the government is at the all-time low as each salon has its own idea on how to govern the new territory. Bickering and arguments fill the Duma and the coffee shops as the, those loyal to the salon disagree with whatever any other salon has to say. If we do not wish to, our former democracy to collapse, we must attempt to keep the salons in support of the government and end the endless quarrel. In the future, some of our actions may create cynicism, which could end the system of salons if it reaches too high. We want to reduce the cynicism as much as possible if we do not want the salons to collapse. However, that could mean not getting to work on our own projects, so we should try to balance cynicism with our own ideas. Successfully maintaining cohesion within the salons will keep our democracy alive and our future actions will very well determine the strength of our republic. The balance must be kept. Alright, so now our authority is a little lower. Uh, upper house seats, we definitely need more. And over here, Tomsk, very, fairly white-ish. Hmm. 55% is not bad. And we still, we don't have a, hmm, there are all seats. Greatly increases authority. And we'll do it anyways. 53% is not bad. I know I could be doing stuff for society, but still. But still. Not bad. Free market capitalism is nice. LBJ, hello LBJ. Freedom for... Uh, the independence. The humanists and December salons have united behind a joint proposal to rewrite the common constitution to make it easier for properly vetting political independence to run under any salon of their choosing. The four great salons would still be allowed final say over the presidential candidates and policy platforms, however. Independents would be allowed to have a full political career. This proposal has been heavily criticized by the Bastillards for allowing populist poison to seep within the Tom's system. Uh, nevertheless, <clears throat> The proposal, oh, and by the modernists for weakening the party system. Nevertheless, the proposal is widely popular with the independent political crowd and is likely to strengthen confidence in our republic. Rise the electoral progressive movement. Rain news has been reported about recently about a democracy, calling themselves the electoral progress movement. People from the liberated territories of central Siberia are now calling for the abolition of the special voting system and the requirements for being backed by the salons. While this may sound good on paper to them, for Tom's unique democracy, it, may, it might means the end of the past next ideal design. Technically, anyone is able to run for office, but the salon system constrains the type of ideologies candidates can run on. Some may say this is by design, but it has been more beneficial than anything. The salon of the electoral system has kept Tomsk and democracy stable, something rare for Russia, if not. Who knows of the dangerous ideologies that could sneak into our democracy, tearing it apart from the inside? 
There have already been many responses from the major political individuals, but it doesn't seem like this electoral uh, progressive movement will be going anyway anytime soon. We may have to prepare for a confrontation with it that will decide the fate of our democracy. Hopefully it'll be peaceful, for stability's sake, of course. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, after this one, we're going to go with what? March in the streets? More worrying news from the electoral progressive movement. Multiple marches in the streets of Tomsk have started to pop up, mostly made up of people asking to expand democracy. There's no doubt that this is connected to the movement. More worrying is that there are reports of unsavory elements, former separatists, anarchists, and communists, however. There's also a lot of genuine Democrats in the crowd as well, showing the movement is not just a separatist plot. People in Tomsk are split as to whether the system of salons should be reformed or kept similar. While reforming may allow these unsavory elements under the government, there's reason why things should not be kept the way they are. The salon system is constraining after all. But will reform betray Pasternak's ideals? We must push or, or must maintain our current path. Oh, Borman won. Oh, okay. Equipment? That'd be nice. It is 65, so actually, you know what? We're going to go and grab what? Out of reach. Please. Oh, actually, please, 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 please. Work and training. We don't want the bonus to industry. It's not much, but I'm going to take whatever we can grab. Please, all they need is a little bit more cooperation from you. If you could only just, realizing he had been hung up on, like a chef, let out several curses and place the phone down. It was going to be a very difficult time. He knew that much. After so much time, after so much struggle to piece the public back together after it nearly shattered, these darn protesters threatened to make it all for nothing. If they only could understand that it was all for their own benefit. Now he found himself calling, calling moderate after moderate, seeking to... <clears throat> Calm some political tensions in order to reduce the strain upon the government. Wow. Many had pr proved agreeable. Some, such as that last one, had wanted nothing to do with it. Well, what he could have done was just to solve all this to reassure the people he had just had a little bit more time to prepare. He had not had that time, however. Not had prepared, and now was not, not worthless just thinking about it. Letting out a long, exhausted sigh, he reluctantly picked the phone back on and began dialing yet another number. He wondered what Pasternak would do. Were he alive to see what was happening? Would he have maintained course even then? Lakachev had no way of knowing, so he simply placed the phone on his ear once more. With the first leg of our expedition to Norals complete, we can now haul in heavy construction equipment to restore the old Soviet excavation infrastructure back to working condition. Yes, please. Control slips away from the best of men. Hey, look at that. Oh, political situation is ideal. It's 58%. Political immigration still 30... Eh, 35% is not terrible. Counter protests in the capital. The mayor of Tomsk sat at his desk, his hands shaking violently as he listened to the chief of police describing the situation outside. The mayor, a chubby small man, had only been elected a year before and already protesters were tearing apart a city, maybe even the whole country. What a great way to start my administration, he thought, with some bitterness. The circumstances are dire, sir, said, began the chief. It appears that former separatists have traveled from all over our territory to protest the government. The mayor nodded, desperately wishing he had a cup of vodka to calm his nerves. No major fights have broken out. And the counter-protesters? Just as angry, but no major fights on their end either. It seems they're just waiting for the other to make a move. His chief nodded. We have enough units to defend the Republicans against separatists. Well, we could also leave them to their own devices. His chief raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. I am waiting for word from the government, as this is a national issue as well as a local one. As the mayor said this, the door slammed open, and in came a young man, barely out of school, running to the mayor's desk. Telegram from the security minister, or ministry, sir. The mayor grabbed the paper, which ordered to send the cops. The protesters fight it out. Uh, hmm. oh, the protesters fight it out, huh? We are a conservative democracy. I don't know. I kind of want to send in the cops just because you could have like peace there, but if they, let, if they let people kill each other off, that doesn't look very good for us overall. Uh, send in the cops. Screw it. We'll see what happens. Promote the elites. The police call the streets. With violence threatening to terror capital park, the only option was to end the police. To send in the police to hopefully calm the situation down. With the police backing the pro republic side of the protest, we'd hope that the protesters would lose hope in continuing. Unfortunately, however, some protesters did not see the desired effect. Several anti-republicans fought with the police and counter protesters, leading to many being wounded during the fighting. However, after the fighting. Many of the protesters have now been pacified as more police presence is being seen in the city. It seems their decision to bring the police in was a good one as the protesters began to head home. However, many in the government are criticizing their action. We may have decreased the power of the independence, but in the process, we went against the very ideals of the Republic. I'm sure we made the right choice. But what if the protesters started killing each other? W what would happen then? Was that good? Wow, that greatly increased cynicism. Well, we're going to have to decrease uh, idealism. Greatly increase it if we can. <laughs> That's not bad to do. 
uh, but I don't want to greatly decrease our popularity. Reconciliation Tomsk. The Central Siberian Republic's leadership has publicly announced a legal entity for the purpose of understanding what happened during the most recent protests in the capital. This legal entity, officially titled the Official Common Commission on the Truth and Reconciliation of Activities Relating to Protests, is being made up of apolitical judges, officers, and investigators, with the intention of determining the level of violence and who and who is not responsible for violence, in addition to recommendations on how to avoid this in the future. The commission is the first of its kind in history of the Republic, and its scope is the first of its kind. Many of the government have stated that while this crisis in democratic faith has been worrying, it could have also been significantly worse. Violence could have resulted in rioting, one source said. Many political commentators are worried about the results of much of such cynicism in the population, especially from the citizens from former separatist territories, and are all calling on the government to restore democratic faith in the people, and ensure stability once more. Committees always solve our problems, right? Increases idealism. But I also don't want to increase this as well. 42% is not bad. Decreases. Greatly decreases cynicism, though. Hmm. Greatly decreases December's popularity in a random state. Uh, I don't want to decrease political outsiders, though. Increases vote during. Ah, I'll do it once I hear one out. Screw it. Popularity. Authority. Lower house. Not bad. Upper house is looking okay. And uh, advisory referendum. Oh, boy. The common constitution allows for advisory referendums on thorny societal debates. A supermajority on the deputies and the four salons now request an advisory referendum on the political issue. The referendum is as to ask the citizens whether uh, the modernist basilar program of long-term integration of the December's humanist plan of independent political right is to be made law of the land. The campaign is spread throughout the old and new territories. As mandated by the common constitution, the sitting president is in no way forced to follow the referendum's results. Rejecting the popular will, however, is likely to have grave consequences on legitimacy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, just in case, let's save anyways, and then redo the focus, because we can. It looks like Omsk is still hanging out. But, oh well, it is what it is. The Novus, oh. The Novus Sobias Conference, Decemberist Humanist Proposal has been approved. I definitely want this one, versus Integration Bureau. We definitely don't want this one. That would not be good for us. Oh, wow. Look at Crest with a lot more political power. Wait, this one gives us what? A lot more, even more political power. Ooh, let's read about this one, though. A great conference is to be held in Nova Sobiesk, under the recommendation of the Decemberist Humanist Program there. Independence of all sorts shall be brought within the Salon system. Already, a great number of political parties have come forward with candidates' lists, applying for membership to the Salon of their choosing. Giving out this much power to independence is likely to affect the political situation in the Republic for the coming years. For the planned supporters, this is irrelevant. None should see their political freedom put on hold, no matter the circumstances. The nation trusts its people, and this trust shall be rewarded. Uh, expand the university system. Ugh, that's just so good to do. We lose stability, but at the same time, we decrease this. Actually, where is this at now? We are at 55%. Slowly improve. It's only 25%. Oh, we have to do that one. We just have to. And we do the cross so I'm thinking probably do. We love to decrease our authority, but muscle and so weak. It's muscle lens, so the week before the great Lent of Orthodox traditions. Many still follow the tradition of abstaining from meat, and many do not. Either way, hol the holiday is a great excuse to eat plenty of delicious dairy products and to socialize. The Decembers, as always, have organized celebrations to revive the festival because of its historical and religious significance, and in general as a great occasion to celebrate. The week has seen much crap eating, building of effigies of Lady Masalensia, outdoor activities and partying with Lakachov putting himself on an apron and running a street sanded to hand out food. The week's end will see the beginning of Lent, preparing for Easter, and is an occasion for religious introspection. Hmm, I love food. Or whatever that word, word said. I clicked on it before I get really re realized what I clicked on. But it is what it is. The economy, how are we doing? 1.56? Oh, we're actually losing growth. Well, crap. That's not good. Um, if we have to, we could always spend a little bit more money. Okay, never mind. Even if we spend more, it does nothing. Okay, so that's the case. Um, once we get this one done, hopefully we go this way. I, I might just go with something like here. Hmm, increase liquid reserves. More income, maybe. Watch the private sector. The private sector is much like a toddler, capable of bringing one great joy, but when not handled correctly, it can make your life a living heck. An outcome which you much like to avoid. As we attempt to reform the economy and implement good po social policy, or good policy in general, we must be cognizant of the ever ravenous and greedy businessmen in the private sector. If during our attempts to re deregulate the market or implement new taxation systems or policies, we leave even a minor loophole or misplaced com comma, we could end up losing tens of millions of dollars. We mustn't let the private sector get ahead of us, which I read last time and I now realize, but I apologize. Sometimes I just can't remember what I've read before. My apologies. Because that is not good. Inflation is way too high. Uh, even if we spend more, it's not very good for us either, but still. P from trade. Mm. Uh, are we building any planes yet? No. We're trying to get anti-air tanks, fighters. Mm. Mm. How are we looking here, too? Modernist Bastler victory. Well, crap. Well, that's not work. That's not good. Um, 
One of the shiny ragworthy features of democracy is the ability to make decisions based on directly of the will of the people, and today we will just do that, sort of. The results of our non-binding referendum on the political status of independence are in the modernist Bachelard plan of denying independent politicians easy ballot and government access in favor of more gradual political integration is one. For now. The people of Tomsk seem to largely accept and appreciate a unique salon system the way it is, and agree with modernists and bachelors that allowing independence to operate freely within the system would destabilize and slower governance. While there are many people who support independence working outside of the current system, these people are not as numerous as some may have anticipated. Of course, the referendum is not binding. The president is not legally obligated to act upon his results, and if they feel that making life easier for independence is a moral or a practical thing to do, there's nothing stopping them except the knowledge that doing so would create a lot of cynics. Let's see if we can maybe get a better uh, outcome in the future. The advisory referendum, Humanist December's Victory. And I totally didn't use Khan's commands, and that's why we totally don't have both options available to us right now. Totally didn't use them. Uh, I do apologize, like, I don't want to use Khan's commands, but, like, I don't want to go with the integration bureau. If we're going to go with one route, we got to go with the full run, one route, especially this, uh, the route that gives us more daily political power and stability. So, whenever I go back and do one of these two routes, um, I'll make sure we'll go down the integration bureau, but for now, I do apologize that we had to <clears throat> totally not use cons commands, but basically had to, so the people have spoken, and yeah, we're going to go down this route. My apologies. It is what it is, but oh well. Um, I just want to make sure that whatever route we do, that it's kind of, I don't say centralized, but kind of directed towards that way, so it is what it is. Other than that, not much has really changed. Just make sure that we got that route, and over here, it's looking pretty good. We got some upper house, lower house approvals still. And let's see, improve the military. Let's improve our industry. Like, I really want to make sure that our industry is pretty good. Get more output first. Let's do that. Uh, your league is killing itself. Uh, even though we've already basically done it. We've centralized all of Central Siberia pretty much. Which is really nice. As we watch everyone kill each other off. Up next, like I said earlier, we're going to do watch the private sector, just in case. Get a little bit more GDP growth, our inflation, the big darn hero. Oh, and also, our growth is still negative, because... Yeah. Is it possible to just... Increase this so we can have... Some more actual growth here. Yeah, it actually is possible. But I don't want her to... We go, ooh. Ooh. Deficit? Mm. Surplus? Ah, whatever. The big, big gosh darn hero. Nikolai Masilov hit the dirt as another bullet ripped through the air next to his head. He sat up as the sounds of combat rage of sound uh, him, around him. His back pressed against the south wall of a brick house. Attempting to regain composure, he rose to his feet and repeated his instructions to himself through labor breaths. Leave the local militia in defense of this village, easy. He just had not been expected to, uh, to be so many darn rebels. His arrival to the bandit plague village was almost in sync with their ambush now. The disorganized defenders of the village were spread out and vulnerable. Nikolai appeared across the street where two of the local men are... Uh, armed with hunting rifles, stared down a rusty truck with a salvage machine gun from behind a hasty assortment of sandbags. The aging soldier suddenly pulled back behind this wall as another hail of lead tore through the thin air beside his cover. He gripped his service revolver until his knuckles were white, drawing his sharp breath before leaning out of safety to find. A child no older than four and clad in a crimson stained dress was toddling into a dusty road where the skirmish was going on a mere thirty feet in front of Nikolai. Misty-eyed and scared, the small girl cried out for her family as she staggered aimlessly in search of them, nearly in the bandit's line of fire. Nikolai's panicked thoughts wandered to his daughters at home before he found himself bolting out of the safety of cover. Bulls bit into the wall behind Masilov, ferociously, barely audible over the deafening drumbeat of his heart. The girl's now almost in the street, her bare foot past the brick wall that had been shielding her from the bloodthirsty gunners. Barely a religious man, a curse led and laden prayer still escaped Nikolai's lips as he drove forward. His left ear now ringing from a barely missed shot. Scooping up the girl, the man rolled back into cover as a spray of gunfire dug into the soil where the toddler had been standing moments before. Ain't he just... Recruit the best outsiders, huh? Do you anything about poverty here still? Yep. Yeah, prepare for war. We can close out of that one. Uh, we're still trying to integrate Western Mongolia. My goodness, that takes so long. Mm, no. It does not look like it just yet. Even though I'd love to... Oh, actually, oh, no. Agriculture... Yeah. Yeah. Because right now, we're at what? Minus 0.18. This one would be very good to do for poverty. So, thank you. Of course, we got to wait a little bit longer for it. Take effect first, of course, but that's okay. Battle of Barcelona. Good. X dealing with extremists would be good, but we're gonna go here. Actually, can we still do this one? No, we cannot. Okay. So, we just gotta wait a little bit longer. Come back up here. Deal with this up, up here as well. And which actually is not bad. Where are we at? It looks like over 60%. 63%. Past one month with idealism greater than 60%. No political outsiders. 49%. Failure to do the drills or in the rise. We're idealists. 
ugly truth. Watch private sector, flexible stuff here. Recruit the best outsiders, bribe the opposition, promote elites, of course. Recruit the best outsiders. Increases political outsiders, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Keep working on all this stuff as well. How are we doing here? Not bad, not bad, not bad. Over here, though. Mm, I do want to increase our popularity somewhere, but... We're still relatively popular. 29% is not bad, but we're quickly matched by the modernists. I think over here, bribe the opposition. Oh, look. Conference to resolve the political crisis of the Novus Abyss Conference. Good. Basic army. Wait for this one, too. I just want more. Just more poverty reduction. That's all I really care about too much right now, so... Poland fell zone? Well, Zoig, Zung, Zwang, Zing, Zung. Cool. Rationalize? Might as well. S O S O E. A government and a large, an unwieldy thing. Like a giant, its motions are clumsy and sweeping and often inefficient, such as the case where many of the government's state owned enterprises are SOEs, are for short. The government run organizations suck up millions of dollars every year, and we seem to have accumulated quite a bit of few of them. If someone cut back and slim down the government, we will have to analyze the functions and success of our various enterprises and decide what to merge, what to privatize, and what to close down. Equipment. So where are we on equipment? We just got that one done, right? So that's actually worthwhile doing this one right now. Report from the commission. But dealing with extremists. The government has now gone ahead with a program to tackle the political crisis. The one has been taken out of much of our opposition, however. Some determined critics of our government remain, or republic remain. Hardlander militarists in Novosibirsk and Krasnoyarsk, intractable critics of the late CSR, anarchist remnants in the Far East, all united in their hatred of our government. Discord has once again broken out in favor of salons over the topic of censure. Many argue that the Republic is no place for extremism, and that the voices of these enemies of the state should be silenced. Others point out that with their new approach to the critical crisis, the opposition's power base dwindles day by day. Better to let the radicals rage to an ever-shrinking crowd. The president is likely to be asked to make a final decision. University system. Yeah, we have to. And cross on thinking. Dealism. The political outsiders. Oh, okay, why not? Basic army, of course. And nothing else there yet. It's fine, whatever. How much book apart to get a day now? Two? Holy crap. Nice. Very nice, actually. If that's the case, I want to invest more here, too. So, research facilities, construction is not bad. Academic base, more research speed. I want more research speed, too, so go with that. Where are we at here? Oh, we're actually slightly growing now after we did some of these focuses, which is nice. Slightly growing. Debt is $2 billion, which is not bad, especially with a slight, slight surplus. Um, honestly, I'm halfway tempted just to get rid of a lot of this inflation, but by doing another thing here, let's see, inflation will increase, GDP growth will also increase, uh, oh, actually, we're going to need more lower house support as well, lower house support, um, anything here about inflation, business taxes will decrease, inflation will continue to increase as well, which does suck, healing the land, yeah, you know what, inflation is just going to keep going up, 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 up. Let's do this. I, as much as I like doing fresh off the presses, it's only 1% more growth, and we have over 3% inflation, so we're going to counter pennies. Because that one will go up to a 3% total reduction eventually. So we lose some growth over time, but by cutting down inflation, that should help our growth a little bit more than anything else. So This has my plan. I could be completely wrong, but new friends of the salons. Uh, the four great salons have opened new branches all across the nation, and scores of curious citizens have begun attending them. Not all of our new residents find the salon system pertinent, but enough to do that the four great societies have been seeing their membership swell. Dozens of new thoughts, artistic techniques, and political programs have begun swirling around each salon. Despite the grumbling of the old guard, the growth of the salon system is in the long run, the likeliest candidate to fully resorb the political crisis. And for that reason, it could be a good idea for the central government to aid its spread throughout the nation. Arts, science, and politics shall be democratized. A new set of citizen assemblies are given birth throughout central Siberia. Spend the power grid. We're going to wait. Um, yeah, not bad. Better political stuff there. But let's go ahead and get more lower house support first. Well, we need more authority too. Ooh. Well. Okay, more authority. And then, oh. Well, I guess then we'll get some more lower house support because we need it. We don't need it immediately, but we're working on it. We're working on it. Oh. We actually have some sort of thing there. Uh, it was green for a little bit, so... Counter pennies is nowhere there yet. Oh, look at point four. All right, point five four. Hey, point five. You know, it's not it's not much. It's still not much. Let me just put that out there. It's not much at all, but still nothing there yet. Happy August, everybody. 
1.655 dealing with extremists. With a gauntlet of extremism gripping tightly our nation, we must decide how it should be handled. The ideologies of fascism, communism, and all the cousins threaten to strike at the very heart of our very democracy and eliminate the experiment we started. Nevertheless, our mission is to allow people from all backgrounds to have a say in our government. We, will we decide to ban the radical par political parties to ensure our democratic system? The idea of placing asterisks around freedom of speech contradicts our original message, but will protect the government from falling under the oppressive boot. Alternatively, we could continue permitting the radical rhetoric at the cost of the possibility of that one independent party may gain too much support. In the end, however, we would maintain our belief that everyone in the country should have a say in the government. Independent parties are too dangerous. We stand for freedom of speech and the right to vote. That's fine with us. We'll do that one. Actually, what else do we have here? Anything else here? Uh, decreases, political outsiders, cynicism. Um, basic army, our group is just really disorganized. Screw it. Recruit the best outsiders. Oh, we all do this one too, so I don't forget about this one too. Oh, okay, no. Okay, wait, God dang it. Actually, this increases, increases support for everybody, so. And resolve the political crisis. Through cooperation disputes, the four great salons have managed to weather this first political challenge to pass the next new republic. The issues of independence, of politicians, and of cynicism in our nation are far from solved. Left to fester, these twin threats could end up fatally undermining our idealistic republic. This is no reason to despair, for a great democratic experiment also gives us the tools needed to weather the storm. We must stand vigilant, remain true to ourselves, and open to compromise. Past the next legacy must ensure or endure, and as its guardians, the four great salons must constantly strive to rise above petty politics to ensure that the flame of idealism burns in central Siberia. Yes, reduce strain, and begin to rapidly improve ad admin efficiency. Ooh, I like that a lot. Eight is not bad. Why about corruption? Goes a function of administrative system is really good, so good. But more taxable base population, more stability, 15% more, uh, plus 50% more daily political power gain, better supply consumption factor. Just overall, it's so strong. I love it. Bribe the opposition? Probably not. It will build key railway links. Yes. Transporting material from north or industrial and commercial centers in the south has been a difficult endeavor. The permafrost has been has made the establishment of roads and railways difficult to say the least, but there's another venue. By having our man reclaim Dudinka for and reconnected with the old Soviet railway system as part of a Siberian plan in the 30s, we can use the Yenisei River to once again ferry products to more hospitable destinations downstream. No more debt, but that's no problem. We get one infrastructure, increases GDP by 0.01 billion. A little more manpower and infrastructure, yes. Okay, so now let's go back over here. Can we do anything here yet? God, yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we lost our authority, but that's all right. More lower house seats. Good, good, good. Just prepare ourselves for the future. And since we're here, let's go do one of these as well. Even though we should be building more than just roads. Uh, prisons? Mm, we're already good on stability. I want more prisons. Bog. Ooh. Right there. Prison right here. Two prisons. Not just one, but two. Because why not, my friends? Why not? Oh. And we have industry management done too. Great. Indonesian wars? Well, that's not our problem. Um, yeah, you know what? I don't want to, I want to increase voter turnout, but... Hmm. Increases idealism. It's not bad, but we don't really need that now. Uh, yeah, not really need to... Yeah, I don't want to bribe the opposition. Definitely not. You know what? Scientific method. Port heavy machinery. Yeah, we, honestly, let's, let's go do that one, because this one's pretty low already right now, so... Whatever we can do to help that out is a good idea. So, report on the, from the Commission of Industry. A few months back, a commission was created with the purpose of identifying immediate issues that needed resolving in our industrial sector. The commission recently published a report discussing the various problems our nation has, and they are immense. Massive damage is being inflicted on our environment. Workers' rights are being abused and poorly maintained in some areas are non-existent. Infrastructure is choking transportation around the nation. The issues presented have no simple solutions, and balancing the economy with other interests of the nation will prove, of course, quite difficult. Good. 16, not bad. Uranium production. Here we go, expanding university system. I mean, this is too good to pass up. This is really, really flipping good. Cross line thinking. It decreases his authority, but whatever. Eh, we'll do it anyways, because why not? We need more authority here next, so. It's fine. Totally fine. How's the economy looking? How's the counter pennies? 0.14% inflation. Hopefully it's going down. Growth is okay. We got quite a bit of surplus here, though. 1.96, huh? Well, let's see how best we can do. I wish we can go above fair. Maybe we can go to the next stage. We'll go to acceptable or maybe even intermediate. That'd be really nice. Effects on debt of GDP growth, huh? Mass production. Very good. 
And we'll come back down here now. Whee! Alright, yes please. More industry, thank you, thank you. More output, yes please, because we need a lot. Temporary load of the political crisis. Extremism, no longer a severe threat. Instability, ever present, but not at all crippling anymore. It will be a stretch to call Central Siberia a beacon of stability, but it's safe to say that the Young Republic is out of hot water now. Look at that, minus 0.27, Jesus Christ, that's so good. Many of these former extremists, as well as a number of assorted independents, have begun accepting and joining our salons each day. The number of heated, angry arguments between factions threatening to break out into violence decreases, with the number of impassioned but calm and logical discussions between former rivals increasing. It's truly a wonder to see, for example, a former Silovik from Novosibirsk actually engaging in friendly debate with his colleague regarding the place of military intelligence in the Republican security apparatus. Had we failed to get men like him on board with our political system, maybe he would have been threatening the state with military power instead of sitting down for tea and a chat in a salon. Much progress has still yet to be made, but slowly the people all across the realm are integrating into a republic. Finally, a moment to breathe, but more authority. Yes, please. I want to make sure it's still high. I want this to be the best house, whatever we call it. And I think we're going to start just really focusing more on here. So we want more authority, and then more, more, more for regional development. 2.3, that is so much. Oh, that's so nice. Free India, huh? Define free India. Or, economy still disorganized for now, but that's fine. Yeah, basic army. Yeah, I mean, army is very, very basic, if you want to put it like that. It's fine, though. Integrating the Siberian plan? Oh, yes, please. The Siberian plan was the final legacy of Nikolai Bukharin in the final years of the Second World War. And a few months afterwards, Bukharin had laid the groundwork for a massive industrial system to be created far behind the front lines and protected by the Urals in Siberia. Significant progress have been made with the plan, but ultimately, with Bukharin's fall, it was abandoned. Now with the rest however, not only will we finish what we started, but we will use modern technology and industrial techniques to expand the plan far beyond what was ever planned for it. Yes, please. Oh, hiring foreign instructors. This one's back. Ex oh, expand the welfare state, yes. Slowly improve. Oh, poverty relief. This would be said, the poverty rate will begin to improve. Basically, get a little bit more GDP growth, or this one says... Ex Probably will begin to slowly improve. And we get more stability. Increase the GDP up by, by 5%, though. Ooh! Ooh, that's really nice. Um, you know what? Let's get the GDP first, and then we'll go for the other one. The democratic process. Abram entered the warm building. Glad to be out of freezing streets of Tomsk. Rubbing his hands together, he stepped towards the desk. A short woman with glasses sitting behind him. Good morning, ma'am. My name is Abraham Dmitriev. Abram. And I used to be a politician in Novosibirsk. How would I run for office in Tomsk? The woman looked up and smiled. Oh, it's very easy. Just sign all these forms, fill out the location you wish to run, include which salon you've been backed by. Wait, so I have to be backed by salon? Why can't I run as an independent? The woman's smile faded. That's not how Pasternak design our unique democracy, dear. You must be backed by salon or else you will not appear on the ballot. Cleaner and simple. Doesn't you seem very democratic, as you have to follow the ideology of the salons, but I guess if I had to pick the modernists, I guess that would be the best. The woman leaned back in her chair. Well then, make sure you get this signed by a modernist leader and bring it back to me. They have a meeting in the convention hall next week, and dear, don't forget or don't complain about how this is undemocratic. You live in Novosibirsk, for Christ's sakes. He'll get used to it. He'll get used to it. Yeah, not a lot of growth, but hey, it's looking a little better for inflation, maybe. Report from the Commission on Industry. Our plans for our strong industry are proceeding well, but we are running into problems daily. Problems that involve every citizen and every member of the high class. Several businesses are expanding their factories deep into the forest of Tums. These industries are causing plenty of environmental damage and must be stopped before the wildlife of our country is eradicated. This kind of expansion is contradictory to the very message we push to our people, and it is our job to prevent the citizens from falling into the never-ending cycle of labor and nature reduction. A few of our businesses are also abusing our worker population by increasing working hours, reducing pay and reducing fact quality, factory quality in a way. These businesses are enforcing their will on the workers, causing them to feel more resentful and radical towards the factory. We cannot have class division or democratic system. We must work to give the workers what they want and institute a law that prevents worker exploitation. Much of the infrastructure in our country is so damaged from the warlords and Soviets before us. We need to start a nationwide plan to build up our infrastructure once more to ensure citizens live healthy, easy lives. We still have a lot of work to do. Environmental rights. Or workers' rights. Now this one first. Although the Siberian plan has done much to amplify our productive capability and provide us an industrial base, it has also numerous effects on the environment. Our scientists have noted increased contamination of rivers, lakes, and other sources of drinking water for the public, increased rates of acidic rain, and vast increased amounts of smog. Mainer Salon are taking issue with the vast and increasing destruction of the environment that our industrialization efforts have brought, and demanded that action be taken. It may be time to take a stand on environmental rights and issue regulation to protect our natural resources. Assessing the impact of environmental regulations on the ecology of the Kodoma River. At least we're still growing, barely. We're not really expanding very much at all, but whatever. Inflation's slowly getting better. Um, that is, uh, well, it is what it is. Tax stamp cut? We could do that, but, um, I don't want to spend a political power for that. We need to save our pee-pee. Or poverty relief. 
Of course, it doesn't help that we're doing all these. It doesn't give us more depth, but whatever. What about up here? Ah, so waiting. Good. Good. Courage, political thought. Like I said last time, not worth it. Not really too much. I mean, it does give us some good stuff here. Don't get me wrong, but still. Authority. I do want to expand authority, but poverty, poverty, poverty. We don't need to expand authority yet. Nope, 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 nope. Basic army still sucks for us. Um, do we still have overextended administration? No, it's a business conference. That's really ni quite nice. Rushing SOEs. Overextended administration still. We still have that. Oh, can we actually get rid of that at all? I hope we can. I hope to God that we can. Because if not, then in the future, I know that to not take this one too early. Because this one reduces administrative strain. Because it was this one, then one of these two, then that, yeah, that one, that one. Phoenix plan. Yeah, so we have it forever now. Hopefully. Or maybe we'll get rid of it in the next stage. Hopefully it gets rid of it, because we now are glitched that we have it. That sucks. That actually really sucks. Integrating the Siberian plan. The time has come for us to begin the integration of one of our largest plans to develop Siberia and its people. First and foremost, it is imperative that we... <clears throat> Preserve the free thinking ideology that citizens of Tomsk share. An idealistic democracy does not work where there's disunity. We must have a way to communicate with the more extremist Russians so they'll be properly absorbed into our democratic system. We must also develop a program for workers to receive a share of the nation's wealth. These moderate payments will help reduce the spread of hateful radical ideologies by improving the workers' situation without making their normal pay meaningless. Along with this, there will be a conscription to develop soldiers for our Grand Liberation Army, and they will bring our democracy to unite Russia. The plan has many different parts, but it will be used to bring the whole of Siberia together in a loving, cooperative, cooperative community. Through our efforts, we shall unite the salons and work for Tomsk that stand strong in the face of authoritarianism. Through this plan, we will ensure that our idealistic democracy survives for many years to come, then. The Republic will be preserved for generations. Long live the true Russian democracy. As much as I want foreign instructors, that one's next. Alienation. Once, Arkhamen, a pelican, had been a high-level official in the government of Orosia, doing what he could do to serve his people. The Altai, as well as the newly arrived uh, old believers. Those days might be passed, but he was no less committed to serving his people's interests. With the restriction of political involvement to the Salons and their members, however, he had to join one of them to do so as much, and as such. He had begun attending the meetings of the Humanist Salon, seeing them as a, most likely aligned with his ideals, however. It, had it not gone exactly as he planned? Why do, we, why do you say we must focus on improving the cities first? Eric Mimen found himself asking this as a response to a fellow humanist. They're both at the latest meeting, full of leaders and aspiring leaders alike. What about the people of rural areas? Some cannot afford a way. To my die, they must. Protecting the welfare of the common man must include all of them. And it will, I assure you, the other man replied, with a patronizing smile that Ackman immediately hated. The cities must be our priority for improvement, because as the lives of the people in them are bettered, so too will the lives of rural people be. <clears throat> I understand your concerns, but for the sake of the villages, the cities must come first. Now, if you excuse me. The other man walked past him, as though he was of no importance. That was his other problem with the humanists, Ackman thought. While the focus on welfare of the common man was well and good, they put too much of an emphasis on the ideas of leadership at the same time, and too little on the thoughts of the people. As he came to con this conclusion, he began to wonder if all the salons had the same nature. Even the selfless lose faith at times. Workers' rights. Oh. Uh, poverty will begin to improve. I do like that one. And industrial expertise will begin to slowly improve. Where are we at for this one? Oh, actually, we get, like, actually, we're going to get that immediately. So actually doing workers' rights immediately next would be good. A light touch, of course. Uh, that's not bad to do. Healing the land. Definitely do this one first. The delicate balance between workers' rights and business owners' profits is a fickle thing. Well, instinctively, one might automatically side with the workers. It is important to remember that without the capitalists, there will be no investment into the economy, save government expenditures. However, trading too much on workers' rights could lead to riots, rebellions, and even revolution if we're not careful. And so the government walks this fine line, attempting to appease both sides and not hand too much power to either faction. But if you'd like to read about better industrial expertise, please go right ahead. Excellente. Very, very good. 10 hour workday, actually, we lose because factors, acceptable regulations. 10 hour workday hurts us. Ooh, actually, does hurt us a little bit. A little minimum wage does hurt us quite a bit as well. Business tax will decrease. God dang it. Oh, expanded mining operations. Petroleum operations. Oh, this one. Eh, do both. Why not? Screw it. Do both. Basic army. We're very idealistic here. Expand the yeah, out research facilities. We have to do that one. Cross on thinking, to move. Actually, we don't need this one anymore because I don't want to lower authority, which we don't need to do anymore. Greatly increase idealism. Well, 67% for political integration is not bad. At least in my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong about that. Hey, 1.3% looking a little better. 4% inflation. Holy crap. We're at what here? 50% effectiveness, which is not bad. D reducing inflation by 4.45%. Endearment. Staring into his drunken forlornly. 
Uh, Eric and Manpelican hardly noticed when a man walked into the bar and all heads turned toward him. He hardly cared either. The usual, please. The man sat as he sat down next to Eric Man. As the bartender went to get the liquor from the top shelf, Eric, Eric Man, uh noticed the man beside him turned to look at him with a frown. Are you alright, he asked. Eric Man let out a sigh and gave a thin and sincere smell. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. What's your name, by the way? <clears throat> I'm surprised you don't recognize me. I'm Dimitri Lakachov. And you? That certainly caught Eric Man's attention. What a cosmic coincidence that he should meet somebody that important, that important here. Glancing to the door, he saw a couple of the bodyguards paying close attention. My name is Eric Man Pelkin. Currently, I'm with a humanist, but it hasn't been working out. Uh, Likachev's surprise on hearing that seemed genuine, and he seemed to want him to continue. Though he hesitated a moment, Erkamen ultimately gave in. A bunch of darn elitists who think city people are so much more important than everyone else. I'm, I agree with them on the goal, but their approach is insufferable. That made Likachev smile. It was the most sincere one Erkamen had seen in weeks. His drinks are on me, he told the bartender, he needs them. Then Likachev again turned to Erkamen, seeming to study him for a moment. I can't say we'll agree on everything, but for among the Decemberists, it's always the people, city or rural, Russian or not, who come first. If that's the sort of attitude you're looking for, then you're always welcome to tenor meetings. That's so, Erkamen replied, feeling a strange sort of relief and acceptance. You know what, I think I will. Thank you, Dimitri. Hope, once lost, is restored to the heart. Healing the land. Oh, that's not bad. Light touch. Yeah, we need a light touch. The free market is one of the most powerful and transformative forces on Earth. In just a few decades, the free market turned the backwater agrarian U.S. into a global industrial superpower. Being that Russia was the first under communist rule and then unsplit between dozens of warlords, we're never able to experience these transformative effects. Now, however, we've re reunited a significant portion of Russia and have built an economic framework in which a free market can thrive. It's time to sit back, relax, and let the free market do the work. Nice. And of course, higher version of the truckers. 2.3, still not bad. I love it. More pee pee. We love the pee pee. If you want to approve academic base, please go ahead. But happy 1966, everybody. We're still years off from invading Baratheon, but you know what? What's okay with me? God. She anything else down here? No. Good. Our selections? Nothing happened. Okay then. Just decrease political integration and stuff like that. That's fine with us. A light touch is very good. 1.4, you know, oh, GDP is finally rising a little bit. Our national debt's 2. Point, basically 5, 20.6% 20 to, 20 to GDP ratio. Uh, where are we at for this? Fully decentralized gives more construction speed and base, but fully centralized free capitalist economy sounds very awkward, but, you know, whatever. Either one is fine with us. We're spending the most on military, on civilian spending. Oh, boy. We really don't care about military spending at all here. Oh, also, since we are here anyways... Authority? Okay, why not? Not bad. A light touch. And healing the lamb. Decades of loop up of bombings, wars, roving raider bands, and smog induced industrialization has taken a mighty toll on these lands. Forests lie barren, destroyed by years of heavy fighting and destruction. The links of rail and road that once held the nation together are now disjointed and fragmented. However, it doesn't have to stay this way. Peace and civil governance are returning to these lands, and so too does the opportunity to fix all that we've wronged. The forests can be regrown, the new railways put down and sew the nation together again. What point is there in reuniting Russia if that's all is lost? Assessing the impact of environmental regulations on the ecology of the Kadoma River. Over the past three months, our team based at Tomsk State University has been monitoring populations of various freshwater fish in the Kadoma River, a left tributary of the Tom River. Data from the previous assessments has been difficult to obtain for a variety of reasons, but according to Baronov, Taliev, and Bachowski, the Kadoma's populations of freshwater fauna in general has declined since the 20s in large part due to pollutants from mining and industrial operations in towns near the river such as Tash Tagol and uh, Kalton. During our assessments, however, we were able to confirm redoubts or rebounds in a number of populations, including Carasius, Carasius, Asipenser Ruthenus, Gobio Sibericus, Leusiscus, Idus, Cobitus, Cerebeca, Bar Barbatula Tomiana, Essox Lucius, Corgonus Maranoides, Stenos Nelma, and Cotus Alasticus. It is likely that the introduction of new environmental regulations and ecological protection measures is in large part responsible for the overbound in the populations. In addition, in keeping with observations by Schwartz, our team took a note of new and extensive flora growth near the banks of the Kadomo, which is also likely attributable to aforementioned policy changes. It's unknown if fishing by local populations will result in increased pressure on these newly growing fishing populations. However, we recommend that fishery quotas be extended to local communities in this region in order to avoid such an outcome. Uh, I'm sorry, but I have to pay how much for the entire paper? 
towards modernity, confidently. The Russian peasant and worker is cautiously optimistic. He must be or else he wouldn't be able to survive in bleak lands such as these. However, in recent years, with a slow advance across Russia, he may finally be re reasoned to be. Our state is a democracy with liberty for all. Our industry is advanced and sits atop the sturdy basis of the Siberian plan. Our free market policies have opened the country to foreign investments and new technologies. Most importantly of all, under our, new, our rule, peace and civility is returning to this lands. The barbarous Russia of old is gone, a new modern Russia approaches. So, increased growth, increased inflation, of course, increases December's popularity a little bit in a random district, replaced the disorganized economy with a December's economy, which gives us way more construction speed. Look at all the stuff we get. Oh, my goodness. Better consumer goods production factor. Oh, my goodness. Yes, please. All is good stuff. Good, 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 good. But after this one, so we'll finish this tree. This tree. And we've got the tree on the left. Expanding the core. December's forebears. Far from friends. We'll do all this world political stuff soon. Expanding the core. During the Unification Wars, our military wasn't as powerful as our neighbors. The fight against the Separatists and the rogue generals was made it difficult for our military. It has been a rough start for a Republican army, but one that must be addressed if we are to defend the territory we have conquered and continue expanding. Our military deficiencies are many, but there aren't many simple fixes that will rectify it. The military as a whole must be strengthened. Marshal Shapshnikov has put forward a set of recommendations on which all salons have been agreed upon. Such improvements will be expensive and time-consuming, but necessary if we wish to one day reunite Russia, of course. Minus 0.45% for poverty. My gosh. The December's economic revolution. It doesn't matter if you're a worker or a businessman, despite the ongoing disparity between those two classes. And life is better for both under the new Central Siberian economy. Living standards have gone up, and a small but steady social safety net exists for those who cannot find work or are unable to work. The number of hungry mouths in our republic has decreased greatly. Many families are even able to afford new furnishings in their homes, such as electrical appliances and TVs. These new furnishings are produced by workers, but overseen and invested in by our country's growing business class. Our free market economy, coupled with expansive industrial base we have built over the last few years, means there's never been a better time to run or own a business here. Factories, farms, shops, and mines flourish under management, both new and old, making record profits despite our strong environmental regulations and adequate worker productions and protections. It's okay to be a worker in Central Siberia, and great to be a businessman. A healthily balanced economy. So now we have 6.5% uh, growth. Our gro nominal growth is 11.75. Inflation is quite high, though, so we still have counter pennies. It's a 90% effectiveness, reducing inflation by almost 1.1%, which is, I guess, technically better than the nominal growth that we get, so doing this is not bad. Uh, national debt is 3.1%. Debt, or 3.1 billion, I should say. Surplus is 0.68 billion. And we're still trying to improve society, so overall, not too bad. Anything up here? Honestly, we're almost done with the political philosophy stuff, unification of Russia. We have to wait until 69, so by 68, we'll start really reinvesting in the military, driving up our debt, but whatever. Improve working training? Yes, please, because industry expertise will begin to slowly improve, and we get more industry. Actually, where are we up for expertise? Actually, it doesn't matter. We're really low on expertise anyways, right? Five a month. Yeah, we're really low on that, so. Yes, please. Very good. And research should be done within a month and a third. Not bad. For better weapons, armor. Or, ooh, what is this one? Improved organization. Debt will increase. Uh, better weapons first. The rifle is the most important tool a modern soldier has at his disposal. And the quality of a soldier's rifle is as important as the training he receives to use it. Even the greatest soldier armed with a musket wouldn't be able to do half as much damage in the field as an untrained conscript with a Kalashnikov. The more lead one can saturate the battlefield with, the greater the chance that something or someone is going to be hit with said lead. Our enemies across the border are surely working on newer and more advanced versions of the rifles that they already have, and if we allow them to advance significantly past us, we might find ourselves overpowered in the field, which would be a big, big no-no. Political thoughts, okay. This other stuff is not bad. We might expand the power grid eventually, but I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, just gotta wait for it, really. Investing construction is not bad, but we're still building up the prison system here. I like a lot more prisons. Actually, no, just do one at a time. That's fine. China's killing itself, which is good. Barati is still not done with Magadan. I guess the divine man had died. Sovereignty of Western Russia under Vyatka. Oh my goodness. That, that, those guys are not easy to beat, but the common core reforms. Shapshnikov stacked the papers on his desk and leaned back. He had actually managed to get all four of the salons on board with his reforms somehow, as was a norm. A few backroom meetings, cups of teas, and IOUs were necessary to unite each salon under his ideas for the military, but at the very least, Shapshnikov acknowledged that they all had reasonably good military plans regarding this other ideological differences. The behind-the-scenes work was behind him now, but ahead came the actual task of serious military reform. Shapshnikov was aware of the opponents of his job, as the core Republican army would serve as the foundation and bulwark of the Republic's defenses. Neither he nor the government could afford to let pesky squabbles hinder the modernization and reform of the military, thus everything he and the people of Central Siberia had worked for would be lost. At least we all agree on something. 7.4%- oh my gosh. Yes, 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 it's 0 0.71 billion, not bad, not bad. Um, anything else here? I'm just- we got a lot of stuff done. The economy is December's aligned. Ah, oh, so nice, so nice. 
And for political outsiders, we are at what? 87% outsiders act is almost done. Just so much more research speed. I love it. Just max out that industry and just research and just... Oh, so good. Oh. Who the heck is this guy? Militaire Behor de Muscovine. Dietrich von Salken. Oh, an old Prussian. Oh, looks kind of old. Looks like he's seen a lot of stuff in life. Uh, we're going with that stuff. Uh, get some of this stuff. How are we doing for this as well? Uh, we're looking pretty darn good. Can we increase our popularity? We can authority? No, no. Uh, ask for lower su house support. We're really good on that. Offer support pro in a random district. Consolidate a rule. Yeah, why not? 30% is not good enough, but whatever. Monitors are doing really well too. Oh, expand the university system. Yeah, let's keep doing that. Keep doing that one. And helps decrease political outsiders, so. Uh, stronger armor. One of the most important lessons learned from the Second World War was the necessity of a modern tank corps. Panzers with more powerful guns and stronger armor than we'd ever seen before broke through our lines as if they were made of putty. We face similar difficulties today. The warlords who have managed to acquire some portion of the former Union's or Soviet Union's tank stockpile figured it out some way to produce it on our often the warlords causing us the most damage and casualties. An armored corps will be vital in ensuring our continued military supremacy. Music to my ears. Dmitry Shostakovich reclined in his living room chair, comfortably sipping from a, tea of, uh, a cup of hot tea. Well, the record player beside him was a particularly sentimental piece, but one he had not heard before. Recently, news had reached him of an old pupil of gaining relative notoriety for or notoriety for a brand new composition, The Son of Incas, by Edison Denisov. He had always been of a promising trainee going on to teach at Tomsk State, something Dmitri had always been proud of, so when word of his composition reached his ear, he went out and found himself a recording. Now he sat comfortably in his living room as the music began. It started off discordant but rhythmic, with an array of instruments playing in an almost frantic manner. The composition segued shortly into a much more subdued but utterly enraptured work for most of the sitting. A lone female voice singing over complexly structured backed up with wind, brass, and string occasionally. The music would dip into a frenzy that would mark its beginning, and remnants of that initial tune lay strung about the length of the work. The composition was loud and yet quiet, discordant yet beautiful, rhythmic yet flowing. Shostakovich sat in his chair for 20 minutes as his former pupil's music spilled out of the record player, and filled his home, leaving the man himself in an enchanted state. As the music faded at last, Dimitri rose to his feet, both intensely affected by the music but also swelling with pride in Edison. Smiling, he went over to his desk and grabbed a pen. Reaching for a few sheets of paper, he began drafting a letter to his old friend, uh, Edison. Marvelous work. Improved organization. Well, uniting, our central, or re uniting our region of central Siberia was no simple task. It required the collective efforts of thousands of soldiers and officers working in tandem in order to subdue the smaller warlords on our borders. The experience these soldiers and officers have gained thus far will prove vital as we attempt to improve our military in the future. We should tap on this experience through the promotion of our most experienced and successful officers and soldiers. Additionally, we should begin interviewing our soldiers to see what they believe needs improvement in our armed forces. Actually, since we're here anyways, uh, we have plenty of arm XP, just make sure we just go 40 combo with. We're going to need some really big infantry boys here. Uh, go artillery. Gives quite a bit of army XP, but that's okay. And logistics, yes. That's quite a bet. And actually, since we're here too, I was going to make these guys tank divisions as well. I don't think we had any sort of tank division template already, so Republican Eagles, fighters, which we will need some more of. Less of black consumption. Minus 20%. Holy crap, that's really strong. That's not bad. Going conscription, skirmishers, Republican artillery, military academy, special forces, new cavalry. Yeah, we don't get anything like that, which does suck. So we're going to have to use these guys and kind of just duplicate them and just call them tanks. So we got to remove some of these guys, which does suck. Uh, remove, remove, remove. Cost 20. Oh, we don't have enough of that. Hmm. Well, we'll have to wait for the what we have now. for now. It's fine, though. December to the line, basic army, which we're working on. Uh, agricultural mechanization for better poverty? Yes. I do want to do all this stuff eventually, too, but... More popularity would be nice, too. 69% lower house approval? Hmm. Decreases authority, of course. Eh, why not? Screw it. Because we can. Because we can. Just because we can. Better research facilities? If you'd like to do about that, please go right ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Oh, crap. Now I'll get... Knew that one. But, you know, modern, or actually modern research facilities. So we lost 0 0.05 political power. We got 5% more research speed, though. That's pretty nice. Proof of organization, yes. Anything else here? Yeah, we can wait for that just a little bit. 
the Republican Eagles. Uh, let's do sealed caravans. Every army marches on its stomach, and if you can't supply an army's ravenous appetite, it will die. Living in the rough and varied lands of Russia, logistics can be a major challenge. Supply lines often run long and snake-like, leaving them vulnerable to attack. The terrain and weather can also make transportation of materials and goods a slow and arduous task, with snowstorms and mud a very real and present threat. Mitigating these threats to our supply lines through the use of new technology is vital in this regard. Improved trucks with all train cap capability, alongside trains which can pull ever larger loads, will surely increase our logistical capabilities. 7.4%, not bad. Attack stem hike, maybe, but eh, we're okay. How are we doing here? Reducing by 1.32%, not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, 7.4%. Actual real growth is actually really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, I mean, eh, it's not bad. Returning, we get more research speed, which is not bad. Ac actually, academic base will begin to slowly improve. Okay, yeah, education. That one's definitely worth doing. Rare Republican Eagles. For decades, the Lufthansa, oh, they look during the OFM, has unleashed hellfire upon her Russian brethren in the West. Uh, there isn't a single Russian in these lands without a story to tell about the bombings. Men and women are swept up in the firestorms of cities, villagers seeing their villages entirely destroyed in the car single carpet bombing. Oil fields alight for days after a strategic bombing. All swords that support the common logic. If we lose the war in the air, we lose the war and we lose it quickly. Aerial supremacy is of the utmost importance if we're to arena Russia and one day combat Germany. Currently, our air force is a joke. We need to produce more planes and better quality planes if we're to catch up and we need to do so rapidly. Anything else here? We just got another one done. Yep. And we did get, as I just clicked on earlier, um, administrative efficiency. Going about 2.43 every month. Not bad. Seal caravans. Very good. As you can tell, we're just beelining through all this industry stuff. Get this one too so we can work on. Oh, was it Norals up here, I think? Construction. Add more to the debt. I don't really want to add more to the debt, but if we have to, we can. Popular river warfare shall increase. I think he's more worse, but why not? Expand the power grid, get more weekly stability, uh, get more power energy, increase state GDP, why not? Because we can. Because we can. Minus 0.48. After functioning administration, streamlined bureaucracy would be quite good as well. More stability, uh, even more daily political power, better supply consumption factor. Just, just good stuff all around, man. Just good stuff all around. Like, this is not bad. 2.56 every day. God, we still have overextended administration. Imagine if we didn't have that. 7.9% for GDP. Oh my goodness. 4% inflation though. The Decembrist Forebears. The Decembrist Society takes its name after the original Decembrists. All noble veterans of the Napoleonic Wars. Just like our forebears, we shall fight tyranny wherever we find it. The original Decembrists led and fought with humble pe Russian peasants. On the soil of Europe, noble and common blood fell and mixed, drawing the two Russian societies closer together, and it is time for the Republican Army to adopt this ethos. Shapshnikov's core army will lead thousands of recruits from all over the Republic in times of war. By supplementing our veterans in a time of crisis with a flood of soldiers, we will be able to trap our enemies between a hardened, a mechanized anvil, and a vast armor, hammer of artillery and light infantry. The common people look to their political leaders in the time of peace for guidance. In times of war, they shall look up to find the republics leading them to glory and freedom. Elections are soon upon us. There's perhaps nowhere else in the world where elections are such an important event than right here in the central Siberian region. We can expect turnout to always, as always, be very high. Our election is not guaranteed, though. Re-election. The campaign season to begin very shortly, and if we want to convince people to vote for us, vote for us once again, we will need to have something to show for all. All of our important plans and promises must be completed before election day if we want to secure a victory. There's no time for dilly dallying. Every get everything done if you can. If you don't, be booted from office. Let's show the people we mean business. I guess we do have the political power for it, so. Nice. Outside actually almost done too. But yeah, this is beautiful. Oh, growth went down. Darn it. That sucks. Oh, 4.56 billion, whatever. GDP growth is still going up. 5.6% inflation. My goodness. My goodness. That's so bad. So bad. So bad. But Republican Eagles. There's some forebears. It's still in September 66, though. Which is good. Which is very, very good for us. And expand the military academy. It is a grim business to study the dismal science. Uh, we cannot, however, let our enemies outdo us in the grim art of causing death and devastation. The military academy in Tomsk will be expanded, and students of the military sciences will be incorporated into our army's planning. Modern ways of organizing forces will be analyzed. New ideas about the distribution of support and equipment support equipment, at various levels will be tested. Innovative ways to use psycholo psychology will be used to enhance the deadliness of artillery barrages. Our adversaries have oft mocked our intellectuals. It is us that shall have the final laugh when we unleash our mastery of the military sciences upon the battlefield. 65. All 65. Good. Can't do that one, which sucks. Um, do that one, I guess. Why not? Oh, is it still going down? 4.53. Not billion. 0.542. 0.52, I mean. Okay, not bad. 
Try the opposition. Not bad. Talon holds elections. Good for them. They have basic army still. Yeah, not bad. I mean, this was looking pretty good. Looking overall not bad. I'm not sure what else to say. Investment construction would be nice. Kind of want to save her peepee, though. Expand the power grid. Pickle thought. Ah, that's good. I'll do them all anyways. We'll do it anyways, because we can. Oh my god. Three a day! Jesus Christ! Three a day! Actually, I'll closer we for some of this other stuff here, too. 6.5. Ooh, that's halfway there. For equipment, not bad. We just got there, of course. Uh, agriculture methods are not bad. Uh, research facilities is going to take a while to do, as well as academic base. The shield's broken. And military professionals, on the that's struggling. Hmm. Just like me. But that's okay. New Republican Army. Let the inspiration for a new Republican Army be a modern version of what has already worked in the past. The core of Schlafstrakov's army will become the elite noble cavalry of old. Acting as the main sword of the army, we will then support this primary sword with our great Russian masses, which managed to halt Napoleon back in the 19th century. Great hordes of men drafted during the wartime will form a huge army of led infantry and artillery to hold the line. By combining the patriotism and education of our elites well, with the grit, spirit, and numbers of the next, we'll create an unstoppable force that will crush every enemy in sight. This will once again demonstrate the greatness of the Rus uh, capable greatness Russia is capable of. Yes. Airport heavy machinery next? Yes, please. As we're spending billions. And by billions, I mean point billions. Hmm. How about first, continue expanding research, 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 research. That's almost free research. Like, that's so nice. It, it goes up by one tick per month, but that's still one tick per month. New cavalry. It's not bad. Recruit is gone. Goodbye. And happy November, everybody. Um, special Forces. Born from the experiments in the Second World War, most modern armies feature at least some special purpose troops, well, tr well trained and equipped with specialized equipment. Special Forces operatives can appear behind enemy lines and perform surgical cuts to enemy material and personnel, after all. An army operates in coordination much like the human body. It is also so surprising, then, or is it so surprising, that the right cut at, at the wrong place can induce catastrophic consequences? The Republic shall invest in the Special Forces and incorporate elements from Special Force training into regular forces. Far better, after all, to experiment novel tactics with small groups of smart and dedicated soldiers for spreading information to the rest of the army. Yes. Standardized army? Not great army, but this is standardized. 30%, not bad. Very good, very good, very good. Looking good, looking good. And over here, um, 61%. It is what it is. Special forces. Good. Uh, more factory output because we can. Because we're going to need it eventually too. Uh, we definitely don't have enough artillery, probably. Where's artillery? Eh, that's not bad. We just gotta make sure we have enough. We don't have enough planes here either, so. Yeah, we need more production units as well. Unfortunate, but a new cavalry. Marshal Schlapschnikov's modernization and mechanization of the Republican Army has united several excellent veteran battalions into the embryonic form of a respectable armory corps. It is now time for us to build on these efforts and develop a formidable group of armor divisions. These soldiers will form the spirit of the Republican Army. Clad in steel and equipped with a devastating fighting power, this modern cavalry will be a formidable asset for our army. Some question the idea of putting most of our veteran soldiers in armored divisions. The December Society believes that the forced multiplication of mobility and firepower will be the best supplied by the, our best soldiers. The versatility of our tank divisions will allow us to reinforce failing defenses, as well as strike vulnerable enemy positions at a rapid speed. Let us renew the awe-inspiring shock of the cavalry of old. Why not? I like uranium, but we cannot research nuclear energy, I think. Militarize the elite. Russia has a long and storied history of, about its military. Its leaders were once expected to know military life, and it was a rare noble family that did not sacrifice at least one military hero to the nation. Tomsk has had a reputation as a city of artists, poets, and scientists within the CSR. It's time for us to trade the pen for the sword. For Russia to be saved, for, for life and hope to endure, we must accept into our hearts sorrow, hardship, and the possibility of death on the battlefield. By once more remilitarizing the upper rungs of the Republican society, we seal a covenant with the common people in blood. The blood shed by the enemies of Russia, and the blood that shall be lost in liberating it. We must fight so that one day songs and poems replace explosions and gunshots across the Russian lands. Clean conscription. If our armies rely on masses of cons conscripts, it is important that we make clear to the people that we expected them. Drafting peasants during the critical months of harvest or conscripting them or urban workers haphazardly and making them lose their jobs are both ways in which common man will grow to hate and resent military service. We will maintain clear and accurate lists of men of military service age from there. Regional bureaus will seek to accommodate families and villages so as to avoid depleting local manpower in opportune moments. Men joining the army will be given precise enlistment contracts, and none shall see their military service prolonged arbitrarily. If we ask the people to give us something, the least we can do is be precise about our needs. Skirmishers? Um, uh, army XP. Yeah, I'll do skirmishers. The illusions of the modern uh, landscape reveal themselves a few hundred meters beyond roads and railways. Hills, forests, rivers, and swamps make progression difficult through, uh, on, through nature, unaltered, now a difficult proposition. 
Fortunately, the common Russian peasant that makes a living from his comprehension of the environment. Many citizens from the countryside are used to exploring forests looking for mushrooms or animal meat in the winter as in summer. These hardy men and women travel across the land to make a living. Their experiences can be incorporated into our reconnaissance of the regiments. While they may not always fight in the central Siberian nature, the institutional attitude of being prepared for anything will let our infantrymen go wherever they please and strike enemy, any enemy, or the enemy, wherever it is most advantageous. New elections on the horizon. It has already been four years since Pasternak entered the provisional government, and the first election of our new system could take place. Four years of great change for the Republic, of hopes and dreams, of victories and defeats, for ill or for better. The current salon has to, uh, has to stand down for new elections, bringing with it unique constructions. It is still too early to tell the old government will be given a second mandate to continue its program, or if a new salon will have to manage uh, rival ideologies, projects, and legacies. Three of the candidates of the 63 elections stand again for the presidency. Lakachev of the December Salon, Sakharov of the Modernist Society, and Harms of the Basila Group, Shostakovich's health being too poor, and his friend and protege, Mozi Weinberg is picking up the torch of the Humanist Salon. It's too early to tell who has the advance, but going to the election, one party has been doing unusually well lately in this campaign. Which salon do we want to follow? Of course, the December's for this campaign. As we've already done all the regional development we can right now. Um, anything else up here? Yes, 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 yes. Campaign on Tomsk. Slightly increases, greatly increases, so you can increase no matter what. Or a campaign, or voting campaign, increases idealism a little bit more, turn out a little bit more. Actually, what do we have for this? Uh, Novus Appearance isn't bad. Tomsk is very good for us, though. Very quite good. A suppressive vote in Tomsk. Cynicism. I want to just increase stuff here. So, campaign here. Let's do Kemerovo, maybe? Maybe Kemerovo. Oh, we can do voting campaign here, too. Oh! Uh, Tomsk, maybe? Voting campaign? Oh, so now we all have extra political power then. 61% voter turnout. And up over here, we have the most popularity out of all the other groups. Most amount of help seats, and lower house seats, and authority. So overall, we set ourselves up to do really, really flipping well. Peace conference is over with who? Oh, that was good. And now we still have 6.3%, not bad. 5.8, almost 6 billion debt to GDP ratio, whatever. And I, we should be getting closer, if possible. Baratia finally reunified in 67. Holy crap, yeah. If we were to go any higher, we would be ready to go immediately. So, not bad. 0.63 billion surplus. Still 1.32% inflation reduction. It is what it is. Military installations buildups. Not bad. All stuff is done. It's 67, of course. And keep working on this stuff. Our synthetic refiners. I'm not sure we're really going to need that, but we'll keep doing that. We're still building a prison system here, so... Ooh, only 19. Ooh, that kind of sucks. We definitely need more than 19. Holy crap. Yeah, we absolutely need more than 19. Oh, my goodness. Anti-air would not be bad to throw on our divisions, though. 40 combo with, with anti-air, because the Germans are going to have probably quite a bit of an air force, so... Doing that probably will save us a, little, a few lives here and there. Uh, keep that one open for now. Ah, oh, yes. Hiring foreign instructors. Who cares about the elections when we can hire foreign instructors? Debt has just gone up a little bit more. It's six, over 6 billion, but whatever. Once we take out Baratia, we should be fine. Not super worried about it, but... Oh, and there goes Jinan. Which I know some people want me to do, but we'll get there eventually. The real GDP growth is getting lower, which is not good. Ooh, went up to 1.34% now. Huh. Oh. Campaign more. Hmm. Camarobo would still be good to do. Campaign in where? Camarobo is still not bad. And now we need more political power, god dang it. Oh well. Should still be able to win regardless, right? Right? But, Private Marshal, well, let's do one of these first. Campaign, voting campaign, in where? Actually, how, how much do we have here? 64%, that's really high. Tomsk? Did I do anything? When remove, okay, so even 7% more. Yeah, we're just really just banking on Tomsk. <laughs> Which probably is not a great idea, but whatever. Can't do anything here, can't do anything here, nope. So we're done with this stuff for now. Uh, probably more artillery, uh, basic artillery, uh, well, I'll probably do that one for later anyways. Private Marshal. Some accuse the December society of elitism, of fermenting a no, new no, nobility able to lord over the common man. We deeply regret this misunderstanding, as our de December's forebears once sought to break down the walls between common and noble folk. So does our modern organization strive to unify all social groups of the Republic. It is this crucial that we look for talent within the ranks. Humble soldiers should not be precluded from leading other men if they shall promise, no matter man's social group. Out on the field there are only brothers leading brothers to defend the Republic. We shall promote the best of the best and order our armory accordingly. Anything else around here? And this looks like battle plans are currently glitched. That kind of sucks. 
Oh well, not really at war for now, so not too concerned. Scientific research would be good too. Mm, screw, screw the campaign. Scientific research. Society, please, please, please. And expand the university system next to you. Should be able to win here, right? Right? Oh, you know, if it's a beer, hmm. We might want to do stuff. Ooh, social credit triumph, huh? Alright. Private martial or Republican artillery? It is the greatest axiom of modern warfare that firepower kills. The vast, vast majority of casualties on armies in the 20th century resulted from artillery shells of various sizes, lobbed from great distances. This lesson was taught to Europe by the little corporal himself, and a little century later, the armies of the Great War fielded gun batteries that would have no doubt impressed Napoleon himself. We shall place the Republican army in the tradition by maintaining a permanent artillery corps, to be placed with the conscripted infantry with disposable. The long guns of the Republic will be our infantry's sword and shields. Victory for the December Society. The December Society has won the second presidential elections of the Republic. Noted uh, Russian medievalist Dmitry Lakachev will use the support of the Decemberist representatives and senators in their bicameral White Duma to lead the nation on the axiom of democracy, environmentalism, and pragmatic liberal conservatism. Lakachev's ambition for the next four years is not a mystery. The Central Siberian plan is to be liberalized within, within strict environmental rules. Workers are to be given a share of the nation's wealth in the reform of a safety net, enough to ward off misfortunes, but not enough to dole a citizen's appetite for the work that lies ahead. On the domestic and foreign policy side of the Decemberists, have long, long argued for an end to extremism in all forms, and an expansion of the conscription to aid the Republican army in its average to liberation. Russia must be united, Russians must be free, and a better future must be defended from those who kill Russia's past. Congratulations to Lakachev once again. It's a little more cynicism, but whatever, I don't really care. Yeah, we won pretty handily. Ooh. With the improved land connections between our capital and Norals, insofar as possible, we can make one final push for the re greater resource exploitation of the northern regions. Ah, uh, sure. Infrastructure, state GDP, yes. Thermal electric plant, yes please. Ah, uh, Expo 67, I remember you. You were not a lot of fun when the you know, toolbox area first came out. But, hey, this went up more. I thought it was 5% something, but now with... Almost 14 billion in GDP. Uh, so it went up slightly more. Well, actually, quite a bit more. Oh boy. 6.6%, 0.54. Now uh, we're back down to 1.34%. Not bad, not bad. Still building up here. Ooh. West Siberian Republic. Oh. Boris Yeltsin. Huh. Alright. He won. And now, towards the new patriotic war. It was not the decrepit Habsburg Empire that ended Napoleon's rampage through Europe, nor the hastily militarist Prussians, nor even the sophisticated modern British. The Grand Armée was fatally wounded by the Russian nation, though through its long advance to Russia and the end of the Battle of Borodino, Bor Bor never recovering its prestige. In the other Russian warlords and the Wehrmacht, we face a different, more dangerous foe. The former will stop at nothing to break Russian democracy. The latter will mortgage their own future if given the chance to finally destroy the Russian people. A new, even more terrible pa Great Patriotic War is on the horizon. One we shall win. Russia will never bend to tyrants. Please. Ooh, more daily army speed. Yes, yes, yes. The Petrov Salon. Realization of stability. Anatoly Petrov had, <clears throat> at long last, managed to come to terms with his political realizations, or rather, his lack of them. The unification of campaigns had removed what he now recognized as blind faith of the youth. Blind faith. In the Republic, blind faith in the, in the then President Pasternak, blind faith in the salons and their tenants. That was gone, and he knew it was reflected in his reluctance to involve himself in the family's frequent political discussions. His mother, however, seemed oblivious to her son's inactions, taking great pride in the characterizing the accomplishments of the Decembers at the kitchen table. Ever since their electoral victory and the implementation of their campaign promises, the introduction of agricultural relief, establishment of environmental regulations, and the careful balancing of workers' rights were all policies that she firmly believed had revolutionized the Republic. Every time they were brought up, his father grumbled. His sister began countering, and Anatoly himself remained silent. He knew now that subscribing to only one ideology or system was inherently flawed, forever constrained to offer only one lens through which to view the world, and he chose no longer to let himself be shackled with the rest, like the rest of his family was. He would be instead approach life as a free man, and he would, instead of analyzing every situation through the lens of politics, simply decide upon which he thought was morally good, what would help the people in that moment the most. He wasn't naive enough to think that he would always make the right choice, or that he would not be unconsciously influenced by the perspectives or beliefs of those around him, but he didn't know that he would be able to sleep at night, free of endless questions, and that would have to be enough. A new system for a new man, or an old man, really. Proof worker training next, yes please? Because this helped out our industry equipment. And this one will help our equipment as well, which is very good. I just love the screen so much. Just keep working, because eventually we're going to be burning through a lot of money. We're going to have a massive deficit eventually, just because of the amount of divisions we're going to be making here. So, a little bit of a warning that we are going to have a massive amount of debt. Yeah, because right now it's not looking bad. Anti-air is pretty good. 
Air anti air equipment is looking okay. We're going to need probably more in the future, though. Artillery is looking okay. Guns looking pretty good. Um, planes are not good, though. We definitely need more planes. Definitely, 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 definitely. We're done with this page, like I said earlier. It's not bad. Keep working on that stuff. Artillery is not bad. I've neglected a lot of the gun stuff here, too. Let's get up to at least here next. That'd be good. And get to rifles very soon as well. We're going to need some trucks, but happy June, everybody. Seven billion, huh? Fifty percent. Ooh, I went a little lower. Less than six percent growth. Whatever. And far from friends. Europe is in agony, and the continent of the Enlightenment critically, or Enlightenment critically wounded by fascism. Few nations spared from gangrene of the Third Reich ag agonizes. Yet one beacon of the Old West remains beyond the Atlantic, the U.S. of A. The Americans are not perfect, and they are very far from us. They should not preclude us from reaching out to them. Any financial aid or scrap of recognition we can deprive our rivals from will go a long way towards helping us reach the top of reunification. Russian reunification, I should say. Trucks? Yes. Local training? Yes. Managing development? Nothing there. Reunification of Russia? Can't do anything there either. Waiting for more university stuff here as well, which would be great, 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 great. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, six points. Six percent is just so much, man. It's just so much. There's no naval expenditures, no na nuclear expenditures yet, because we will probably get nukes in by the end of this campaign as well. Standardized army. Oh, it actually hurts us too. Huh. But less than fifty percent poverty rate. I, I, I say that's pretty good, right? That's pretty darn good. Nine percent. Uh, agriculture's about to get better soon too. Not bad, not bad. Towards a new patriotic war. You betcha. Far from friends. And close to rivals. To the east, on the shores of the Pacific, and to the west, near the gray, uh, Grand and Great Ural Mountains, various Russian states are emerging for the Russian anarchy. Our intelligence agencies have reported a range of candidates for Russian reunification, from professional remnants of the Red Army, to military juntas of the type we found in Novosibirsk, to things as far as the field as German death cults and theocratic popular uprisings. We must be ready for anything. Being able to negotiate diplomatic in integration of any modern republic we find into our own government will be a great boom. Being forced to fight to the death for the future of Russia will be of greater danger to our mission. We must be prepared. Nice. Keep working on artillery for now. Uh, we can work on planes as well, too. Good. University system, we're already doing that. Great, nothing down here. Which does suck, but getting more political power now is not a bad idea, because... We can always save it for recording more stuff later on. Hey, almost 7%. Nice. It went up, and then shot up, and then goes up. Surplus is getting a little bit worse. Ooh, army expenditures did go up a little bit more. Ooh, that's not good. I like more money, though. I don't want to hurt growth, but, you know, whatever. Once we take out Baratia, basically, and Sablin, should do quite well. Of course, it doesn't help that we're doing this all the time. Expanding society, which I should have waited, maybe. Yeah, I should have waited. Far from friends. Our current lands are surrounded by many evil warlords, enemies of our state, that seek to transform our people into slaves of an unnatural ideology. Of course, we are referring to our fascist and communist neighbors. Unfortunately, much of Russia has fallen to the fascist scourge and the communist plague, and Europe is dominated by the abhorrent national socialists, our fellow democratic friends, are simply too far away, and it's imperative that we establish relations with a respectable defender of democracy. We now look to the U.S. of A. for a potential friendship, as they are the only bare democracy that will listen to our plight. We must establish diplomatic ties with America for the sake of our own republic, and our people must have a shining example of democracy to idolize. Surely the Americans will listen to our story? A declaration of intention, though. May we, many we encounter have heard of the transformation of the CSR, and ask of our commitment to democracy and Russian freedoms. <clears throat> To clarify the purpose of our mission, to expand the Russian Federation, we shall present a declaration of intention. All of Solon's and Tom's fight to maintain the frame of democracy in Russia. Of all the political associations, the December Society is the one most dedicated to the people's freedoms, to the respect of tradition, and to the embrace of modernity and Western ideas. Wherever the Republic meets friends of liberty, it shall embrace them with open arms. Our enemies should not make this kindness for naivety. The errors of the past have taught us well. All threats to democracy will be terminated in the appropriate manner. Their perpetrators judged and re-educated. Establish relations with any and all democratic Russian states and see if we can find common ground? Hopefully. That would actually be really good for us. <sighs> economy, economy. 7.3%. Nice. Surplus is getting smaller, which is not good, though. Mm. Close to rivals. Though Russia remains suspended in anarchy, it is through teamwork that we will escape this dreadful era. Warlords from all different backgrounds await our message. Some may wish for our painful demise. Others may seek to form a friendship. Others may only want to maintain a state of peace. Perhaps we can establish diplomatic relations with other Russian powers and see how they are holding up. When our potential most valuable allies lay on the other side of Europe, our only option is to extend our influence in Russia itself. We have to find our other partners. Yeah. Techno music. And it fills the radio waves and shocks the ears of all who are tuning in. Engineering students at Tomsk Republican University, associated with their modernist club in partnership with the composer Eduard Artemyev, 
have invented a new way to listen or to make music using an electronic instrument called a synthesizer. Our TMF and the student, university students have effectively created a whole new genre and sound to be played on the radio and at lively nighttime concerts that can only be described as sometimes frightening, sometimes exhilarating, and always a party and exciting journey for the ears. The avant-garde musical pioneers have already released their first uh, album of techno music and is widely popular with the youth. The humanists and Decemberists, old-timers, and the older generation as a whole have slandered the genre as nothing but bleeps and warps and hardly music at all. As they try as they might, though, they can't stop our culture from evolving. Why do old people have to ruin everything? Depends how young you are. The Northern Path. It's not a true, in a strictly speaking way, that we are a landlocked nation. To the north is the Arctic Sea, one of the hardest to navigate bodies of water in the world. Frozen most of the year and barely reachable from the east or west or distant northern shores are a mixed blessing. However, it's important to we make use of all we have. Flying a great circle route over the northern Arctic allows diplomatic planes to significantly cut down their traveling distance. Local fishermen also extract stocks of food that can supplement our resources. Sediments like Dixon on the Arctic shores and villages among the Yeni Sai Gulf can serve as our fueling points for planes and ships in the region. Yes, please. Nothing there, which is good. And down here, nothing there. Darn it. Oh, we got done with the Norsk group. Okay, well, that's fine. Propaganda campaign? Screw it. We want more stability. Not bad. A declaration of intention. The word spreads. All Russians are used to or rather desensitized to grand political proclamations. Over the past few decades, countless leaders and fighters have come and gone promising to bring stability or peace or glory to work and workers' rights to Russia, and nearly all now are historical footnotes, but this time it is different. The peasants of Western Siberia have heard the Decembrists call to bringing freedom and democracy to Russia and the world, and for once they are listening. The CSR has become a force to be reckoned with, and many tiny voices are across the waste whisper wondering if the Republic will defeat the new and equally powerful governments to the East and West. The promises of peasants' rights strongly appeal to the Western Siberian masses, as, they are, as these are promises which, for the first time in decades, might actually be fulfilled. But there's a degree of confusion regarding the Republic's complex constitutional system, and fear that our strange experimental government may be too gridlocked to bring lasting positive change to their lives. Russia is a precipice. Both on the political and ethnic, ethical grounds, we are rightful heirs to the motherland. The people will know all people will all know it soon enough. And if you'd like to be a better industrial equipment, again, please go right ahead. Excellente. Great. Factory complexes? Good. Actually, do we have something else here? University system, yes please. The Southern Path. Uh, the recent years have not been kind to the Central Asia. With the breakdown of the Soviet Union, the western parts of Central Asia, such as Kazakhstan, have fallen to warlordism and banditry. As to the east, Xinjiang lives haphazardly in Tokyo's orbit, its daily affairs left to local strongmen, as has been the tradition since the beginning of the Chinese warlord era. Central Asia is also one of our few ties to the outside world. Through Xinjiang, we can reach the sphere's leadership. To the west, in resurgent of Kazakhstan, local trade and air hubs have reached much deeper into the south, to Persian India. It's a long path to the wider world, but one we have to traverse as long as the shores of the Pacific are denied to us. Time to start visiting local leaders with gifts and diplomats to see what kind of deal, of course, we can reach. It's not quite 68 just yet. Let's work on tanks then. Oh, so take over in Manchuria. Oh boy. Oh boy. Like and yet unlike. Even better motorized. Anything here? Almost 8 billion in debt, 7.8% real growth. Expand the power grid. Screw it. Why not? More state GDP? Yes, please. Almost 900,000 manpower in reserve, which is pretty good. And the Russian Republic is on the march. The world th thought us buried, though thought the Central Siberian Republic is a failed state, a mere moment of calm in the chaos and horror of the Russian anarchy. Thought the militarists, the anarchists, and other separatists had fatally wounded and passed from next dream. They should have dismissed us no more. The Central Siberian Republic of old was reborn in war, its egg warmed by the hope and determination of it, the common Russian people. Our state forms the embryo of a new Russia, one determined to fight for freedom and, equally, and equality for all of our citizens. Let our enemies quake in fear, let our friends rejoice, the Russian Republic is on the march once again. Good, as it should be. And we finished up. Oh, prisons are done. Good. Um, let's do an army base here. Ah, go to. It's because we can. Look at all the resources we have. Central Siberia must be rich with so many resources. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Jet engines, good. And keep improving our planes as well. We don't want to produce garbage, right? Absolutely right. But yeah, this is not a difficult mission by us. 21, it's not bad. Uh, where are we at for this? So we're not making any casts. We're making everything else but casts. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, anything else here? Popularity is pretty good too. We went to free trade, which is okay. 51, 30. I thought we'd have more stuff to do here regarding uh, the elections and stuff. We can defeat whales, that's fine, whatever, no one cares. Everyone can defeat whales probably. If you can't defeat whales, then we got some serious problems here, but whatever. 8.6%, Jesus Christ. 8.3 billion. 0.18. This slowly gets smaller and smaller. Oh, why are you paying me so? 
Oh, less than 4% inflation. Not bad, not bad. Nothing there, so yep. And I want to get to this focus and probably end the episode there, and then we'll start beginning to really rebuild our army. Like, we're going to build hard. We're going to just shove out as many soldiers as fast as possible. Oh! Oh! Wait, what? What? The South African War just ended. The Union of South Africa defeated the Gross Afrikaanse Reichstag. What? Bro. And it's almost 68. Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, wait, I don't know. Are the mandates done? You know what? Screw it. Let's. I'm going to say this as, like, the mandate save. That's interesting. That's actually really cool. That took so long, though. Oh, my gosh. South Africa looks so big and beautiful, but they have so much resistance. Like, are they out of manpower? No, they have plenty of manpower, actually. They must be, like, all the serve or something, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, not bad. GUI. Yeah. We were trying to be better. Tomsk is really adamant about voting, which is nice. It's fine. You know, whatever. Keep building, 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 and see what happens with this one. 8.8%. It's not enough growth. Oh, actually, that went down a little bit more. Surplus is not great. Oh, uh, as inflation is not cratering, but it was a one point, almost 6.39%. That's a lot of inflation. <sighs> but we've worked on it, my friends. We've worked on it as best we can. Encourage political thought. Spend more money. Screw it. Why not? Oh, with that, now we get 3.17. Nice. But we're on the march, my friends, and that's going to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when there's going to be a lot of bloodshed, but a lot of reuniting Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.